So far when we've talked about batteries, we've talked about a voltage supply and we've just left it at that. So normally we would say, oh, hey, here's our circuit. There's our voltage supply. Here's our resistor and dun, 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 there we go. We would have our voltage and we would have our resistance and we could do our calculations from there. The reality is though, when we have a battery, we'll draw a little battery here. Battery actually has some internal resistance in there. And so a battery would actually look like our voltage supply, but also a resistor in there. And so it causes, in some cases, it's barely noticeable, but when you start putting lower resistance, resistances over here, you'll start to see a difference in what you would actually expect. And so we would still have our resistor here, like we would have there. And we'll say here that we have our EMF. So e, uh, EMF is our electromotive force. And so remember that with the IB, they talk about that the EMF is supplying the voltage and then the resistance is using the voltage. And so we would say a EMF is our voltage um, providing and our voltage drop would be um, our potential difference over here. But then we also, instead of having our setup, what we have here, we have a small R that we put here. And so this becomes um, just common with what we find with any battery, you know, if you Duracell Energizer or anything like that. And so what we can do, there's a way that we can figure out what all is going on within the battery. And we can figure that out graphically by taking some data. And so let's look at, at the stuff that we have here. So normally we would say that V equals IR. We would just say that in general. But in this case, we'll say if we have our voltage supplied here is our EMF. So we're going to say our EMF is equal to our I, our current, and it's both resistances that are a part of that. So R plus little r. So our load here and then the internal resistance of the battery. So that becomes a little bit different than what we would normally expect. Now we can take, now we're just gonna sort of do some rearranging to sort of get to where we can use this equation in a way that's beneficial. And we'll distribute the I here. And so we can say that our EMF is equal to IR plus I times little r. And what happens is if we take, and we have this set up and we take a voltmeter and we put our measurement here, we have it going there, and there, and we have our voltmeter here, then our terminal voltage is, is measuring what's going on outside of here. So we're looking at the voltage that's dropped from when it leaves to when it gets back. And so our IR is, we say V term for terminal voltage, and it's different. Again, in a perfect situation, if you have a huge resistance over here, and a teeny tiny internal resistance here, you're, this isn't going to be super measurable and it may line up as you would expect for the voltage of the battery. However, if this is a smaller resistance, then some of the voltage drop is still going to be inside of the battery. So the rest of it will be um, outside and it won't be the same as what you would expect. So if it's a nine volt battery, your terminal voltage might be six volts and you're like, well, wait, where did the rest of it go? Well, it's being dropped inside of that battery. So now we have our terminal voltage here and we can write this then as we can say our EMF is equal to V terminal plus I times R. So now I'm going to rearrange this again by subtracting IR from both sides. And it gives me this equation. I'm just gonna move over here a little bit and have um, my EMF minus IR equals V terminal. So by bringing this over here, I can end up at this equation. Now we're getting to something that can be useful in a lab type setting. So I'll bring this down here, da -da -da, I'll come down here, and I'm going to rearrange it while I do that. And I'm gonna say that V terminal is equal to negative IR plus EMF. I'm going to make one more rearrangement on it and say that V terminal 
is equal to negative r times i plus emf. Now, why does this become important? Well, in the lab that you're going to be doing, you're going to take measurements of the different resistances of big R. And you won't actually need to measure the big R because the part that we're concerned with is what is the current at any given point and what is the voltage? And so because you're changing the resistance here, it'll change the terminal voltage that you'll be measuring here and it'll be changing the current. So your variables for that equation or for that lab measure, those lab measurements, this will be your X variable and this will be your Y variable. And because now we have this in Y equals MX plus B format, our Y intercept and our slope have value and meaning in relationship to how the battery works. The EMF is our Y intercept. So when we get our graph, the Y intercept is always the electromotive force on the battery. It's the total amount of voltage that the battery can provide uh, to, to whatever's outside of that or whatever is apart from the battery. So some of it ends up being used up in this little R, but it's the total voltage that's provide, provided. And then the slope is a negative slope of the resistance. And it's the internal resistance of the battery. Now note that it is, that it is a negative slope, but the internal resistance will always be positive. So your graph might look something like this. You might have a graph that looks something like this, and maybe it, it isn't even extended through the y-intercept, but the graph might be that um, it might be y equals negative 7x plus, I don't know, 9. Let's say that's your graph when you get there. And what that would tell you is that 9 is the EMF. That's your voltage, your EMF of the battery because that's your y-intercept here. So if we were to bring this up, it would cross at nine volts. And remember, we have voltage here. We have current here. Sorry, I didn't put that there. So it crosses at nine volts. That is the EMF of your battery. And then your slope is negative seven. And so your internal resistance, um, I equals V over R. And so you would have V over, uh, or sorry, R equals V over I, so you would have V over I. It turns out that it's a negative, a negative number, but the actual internal resistance is positive, so we would say that R is 7 ohms, little r. That's what we would have here. Little r is 7 ohms. And so you can take, and based on kind of the way that all of this works, if you take data with a battery in here and changing different resistances here, you can collect the data to get different voltages and different currents going through there. And when you graph that data, you'll get a negative linear slope. And when you align it and you get your equation, the number here is always going to be your internal resistance. And the number here is always your EMF. So you'll need to set up the circuit that you'll be using here and you'll put the battery in. And then you'll be able to add in a resistor and we'll be changing the resistance on the resistor as we're going through here and then you can also add an ammeter to get your current and so that'll go in line with the rest of your circuit there and then you can get your um, wires in and get all those wires in and we'll speed up the process here for a minute so we'll get all these wires placed in and when you're done, you'll have it set so you have a current or a circuit that's running um, smoothly like that. And then you, for this, in order to actually have this work, you have to have some internal resistance on the battery. So you'll go over to where it's showing right now and you'll choose an internal resistance. It doesn't matter what it is. Um, I chose five. You can pick whatever you want. And then you'll put on a voltmeter to measure your terminal voltage. So the measurement from one side of the battery to the other when it's connected in your circuit here. Now your battery shows 9 volts, and that'll be something that'll be helpful for when you're um, working through your calculations on this. Um, 
and you and it's just looking at what's coming across your uh, battery there and so you'll have um, your resistance is in there now you can see that it's only measuring six volts even though you have a nine volt battery and it measures a certain current and so you'll re you'll record those in your in your data table and then you'll shift the resistance on there after you've shifted the resistance you'll record the voltage again and the current again and you'll shift the resistance some more and then again you'll record the voltage and the current and you'll continue doing that at you know seven eight nine ten however many um, however many different resistances you have and you don't need to record the resistance the resistance is just driving what that voltage is and then therefore also what the current is and so you'll record each of those pieces and what you're doing here so once you get all your data you'll go ahead and put that into a graph and you'll put your current on the x-axis and the voltage on the y-axis and when you do that it should give you a linear slope that's negative and so then looking back at the way that the equation rearranges and, and putting in the variables that we are talking about here. On your y-axis you have your terminal voltage and then on your x-axis you're measuring the current and so when that's rearranged, or not rearranged, but when that's put in and you have your, your equation there, the number, the numerical value on your slope ends up being the internal resistance of the battery. Now your slope will always be negative because of the way that that equation rearranges but the value there, the absolute value of that number, is your internal resistance. It's always going to, that will always be a positive number. The slope will always be negative, but you're only taking the numerical value for your internal resistance, and that will always be positive. And then your y-intercept indicates what your EMF is of that battery. And so what, whatever that is, in this case it's 12, and so it would be 12 volts would be the EMF that can be provided by your battery. And then also, again, in this case, the slope here is negative 3.5 and so your internal resistance would be 3.5 ohms. So you'll do that with the graph that you have. You'll include the screenshot of the graph on your, on your paper and then also the equation and, and how that all breaks down.